Hey there, welcome to Charting Toward Intimacy, where we're expanding the natural family planning conversation. I'm your host, Ellen Holloway. Hello, everybody. We are here with Rachel Mullet today. Rachel, welcome to the podcast. Hi, I am so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I am very excited to discuss this topic. We're going to be talking about birth control and specifically like talking to other people about birth control, about their use of birth control. I think this is a topic I personally, I'm like, how do I talk to my friends about this? How do I talk to my family about this? Um, so I know a lot of our listeners are um, really looking forward to this conversation, Rachel. Yeah, it's hard, but I mean, I also think it's such a gift and just kind of sharing our story. So I'm happy to help in whatever way. Yeah. Awesome. So Rachel, could you start by, um, just tell us a little bit about yourself and then also, um, your experience with birth control personally. Sure. So, um, I am married to my husband, Steven. Um, I guess I should also say I am a cradle Catholic. I've been cradle Catholic my whole life, obviously. Um, <laughs> my husband and I got married, um, in 2014. So we're, almost on eight years of marriage now. Um, we have three beautiful children, Eris, um, who is five and a half, Agnes, who is four and a half, and then my son, Thomas, who's two and a half. And then I'm also pregnant <laughs> doing another summer baby Fantastic. this summer, um, our fourth. And, and I've always wanted a big family. So um, I am, we're just, you know, over the moon and, um, and are happy. But um, so my birth control, um, story. I, when I was in high school, I feel like a lot of the sevens with a lot of, um, teenage girls, mm-hmm. I was 17 and, um, I was having horrible cramps, you know, like acne, um, just mood swings, anxiety. Um, my periods were so irregular. I was like, even I didn't even know what charting was at the time I was seven, I mean, I was 17 Yeah, and <laughs> no clue, you know? Um, and, but I was writing it all down on a calendar and I was like, this is not normal. Like something here is, is this is not what the you knew. Said. You knew you something know? was off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, I went to my first ever OBGYN appointment and I showed her my calendar and like the first thing she ever said was, if you ever want to have children, you need to get on the the pill ASAP. And I had this like long desire, like this deep desire to be a mom of a lot of children. And so that like, you know, which kind of shocked me. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm not gonna be able to get pregnant one day. Like I need to get on this, the pill. Like, and, um, she was a doctor and Catholic doctor. And I was just like, yes. Okay. Like I'll do whatever. Um, and I also had, I think this mindset at the time, like, you know, there's almost a pill to fix everything and just give it to me. And I'm going to, this is going to fix it, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I just said, okay, like, let's, which one are you going to give me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and I was already having anxiety at the time, like I said, um, but over the course of like being on the pill, I got even more anxious, um, like shaky, like even like panicky, like almost like angry too. Mm. Um, and I really like just couldn't control it, but I had no clue that this was related to the birth control pill. Mm -hmm. Um, I just thought like, this is just who I am. And I kind of like became my symptoms. Um, and I let that like identify me. Um, so about, I guess like a year or so later, I met my husband, um, at Cotton College. Um, and I was super anxious on our first date. I mean, the first date, you know? Yeah. Um, it's already in- anxiety inducing. <laughs> yes. Um, and I was actually also on medicine for ADHD and I was like, maybe this is what was causing me to be so anxious. And so mm. I stopped taking it like literally that day. Um, but the anxiety like really didn't go away. Um, and I just never would have like put two and two together that this is from the pill. Um, and so, um, and I was also just convinced, like, if I want to have a big family and like, I have to be on this to be able to have a big family one day. Um, so anyway, so we dated, we went to college we went to, um, we dated throughout college and then um, we were going to engage encounter. We got, we got engaged our senior year and we were going to engage encounter like the overnight retreat. And I yeah. remember like we we're on our way and I just looked at him and I said, um, I was just 
dreading it. And I looked at them and said, okay, they're going to tell us about this thing called natural family planning. And I'm pretty sure this is what the Duggars do. And that's just like, have as many kids as you can possibly have. <laughs> and we are not doing that. Like I have to have some sort of plan. I can't just like have like kids nonstop. And um, I mean, I like just drilled it into his head. Like they're going to teach us about this and we're not doing it. You know, um, I had no clue that there was like discernment involved in this. Or like, or like actual science. <laughs> yes. I just thought it was just like, have all the kids you like in the world, like just whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, and it was a two night retreat. And on the second night, <laughs> the topic finally came up and I like elbowed him and I was like, this is it. Like, this, this is, is what I talk. told you about. Plug You're your ears. <laughs> and um, gosh, like, I just always say like the Holy Spirit, like really worked on me in those 30 minutes during that session. Um, Cause we listened to the speakers and then we had time like 10, 15 minutes to like go journal by ourselves. And then you met up with your future spouse. Um, and we listened to their story and like they told us statistics and they told us there's all, there's all these kinds of methods. And I was just like, Oh my goodness. Like, this is sounds amazing. Like this is exactly what I want. Um, but I just told him no. Like I, I spent all this time telling him like absolutely not. Um, like how do I save face yes, in this situation? Like, how do I undo what I did? Um, and so we met back up, and um, and his first thing he said he was like, you know, um, I know you don't want to do this, but kind of makes sense to me. Yeah. And I was just like, Whew, thank goodness because I'm so glad you said that. The Holy Spirit was working on you too. <laughs> Um, and I just, I really felt so much like just peace and relief. Um, and I, I never took another pill again. That was the last, I guess the day before was the last time I ever took a pill, another pill. Um, and that was during our winter break. And I came back to school for my last sem- semester of school before graduation. And my friends that were in my class were like, what did you do differently? You're so calm now. <laughs> like you have no anxiety, like what is going on? And I really don't think at the time that I, um, like connected the two but now looking back I'm like that was it you know like yeah yeah I went from this super stressed out anxious person to to not and um anyways and so and like now I've learned over you know the years like the bill can um like deplete certain like minerals and vitamins mm-hmm. and like actually all the minerals that help us stay stress-free like and so and all those things were getting depleted and um and I just had no clue so, um, here I am, you know, that was in 2004, January, 2014. Um, and we're 2022. So I'm like eight, yeah, we're eight years in and there is no, t- no turning back now, you know? Yeah. Right. I love it. I love, I love natural family planning. I think it's fascinating to know how, um, your body works, you know, it's very right. empowering. Um, so I just kind of share it as much as I can. Yeah, definitely. Oh my gosh. Okay. So what has been your experience then, um, like sharing NFP, like talking to other people about birth control and, and, you know, that whole, Um, that whole gamut. (laughs) Yeah. So I really am just an open book. Um, we tried several methods, um, before we landed on Creighton. Um, I guess we just tried, I guess we tried a couple methods before we landed on Creighton. Um, and we looked into a lot of them, um, and I feel like I have a lot of experience in like the do's and don'ts of natural family planning. And I am just super open about it. Um, a, about how birth control made me feel. Um, and then about um, how Creighton makes me feel, how natural family planning makes me feel. Um, and then I think because I'm so open to it and I do share some of it on the like, social media, but um, especially with like my friends that, and like people that are like friends of friends, um, will refer people back to me, wait, refer me to people, <laughs> no, back to me, whatever. Um, <laughs> because of that, um, you know, people just come, usually come to me whenever they're trying to achieve pregnancy and they're like, okay, you know, what do I need to do? Or if it's after pregnancy and they're like, I, I really don't want to get back on a pill or anything like what, what do you do? What can I do next? And I'll try and, you know, point people into just give them different resources and, um, share a little bit more of our story and, and how, um, it's helped us. Um, and then I will say, I have like talked with some of my closest friends and, you know, I pretty much said like, look, I think these things that you were experiencing 
could be related to your bill, the bill, but um, I do think that's hard to do with someone that you're not super close with. Um, And I also think that people receive more when they approach you. Um, So sometimes if it's like, you know, certain situation, I'll just pray about it and ask Holy Spirit, look, if you want, you know, God, if you want me to um, bring this up or address some or address this, either bring them to me or give me the courage to do it. Um, and he never fails. So <laughs> yeah, that you know what? I'm so, out. I'm so glad that you mentioned that because I think a lot of times when it comes to things like birth control, we want to just go to the youth group and talk to all 100 mm-hmm. girls at the same time and tell them about how terrible birth control is. Yeah. But everything that you have just said has been one-on-one. Like, yeah, it's a it- lot of one-on-one, but then there's like a ripple effect, you know what I mean? Right. Like, um, like, and it, and people really learn and they're captivated by your experiences. Um, and in stories, you know, it's like just kind of telling a story. And, um, and so I think that when we can just be like genuine and honest and just open, um, people just kind of gravitate towards that. And like their interests, people are gravitating towards the truth, especially right now. Mm -hmm. Um, And so when you can be open, like they want to hear it. So, and then they tell people, (laughs) you know, or they try it and it's like, okay, if I help five people and those people help five people and those people help five people, next thing you know, um, that's a lot of people. (laughs) Right, right, exactly. Well, yeah, I mean, there's some, what is it? We're connected to everyone in on the planet earth by like seven people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So like if you have seven people, like in just a few days, like the yeah. entire planet would be. Helped. Yeah. It's like, you just kind of, it just ripples. So, um, yeah, it's, and I will say like, um, it, it's, it's hard go talking one-on-one, like I'll, I'll say there are, yeah. um, you know, good experiences and bad experiences. Like, um, the, um, I can think of like whenever I first, when I first, um, did we decided to do this? I mean, we were like 22, 23 and, um, we told our friends and no one, I mean, we told our close, I, I was like, so just empowered by this talk that these people gave us and just thought like natural family planning was the most like fascinating thing ever. And how like, oh my gosh, like my cycle, like it doesn't have to be a bad thing. Like it can be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I learned so much. I wanted to tell everybody about it. And people were like, our closest friends and family were like, you're doing what? Like, This is a bad idea, Rachel. Like you are going to have a baby right away. Like this is a really bad idea. And, um, we just didn't listen. We were just like, okay, like, you know, we'll show you, you know, like that's what you think, but this is what I think. And it's going to be fine. Um, and I also think, you know, Jesus calls us to instruct the ignorant. And I hate to, I don't mean to say that in like a, um, in a like condescending, yeah. In a condescending way by any means, um, or like a degrading way, but I mean, it is a spiritual work of mercy. And yeah, I will say I was very ignorant. I literally thought natural family planning was just having as many kids as possible. (laughs) I had no clue that there's like discernment involved and prayer. And, um, and so, um, and I think that like, especially in today's world, there's like, um, a lot of young girls who are maybe like, I like, why do I have to have a cycle and men don't, Mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. um, like, you know, my period is so inconvenient. Like I want to be able to control when it happens or, um, but, I feel like if we look at it from like a unique perspective, like God created us women different from men, um, with a purpose, like it is a, there's purpose behind it. Um, then we can really use it to our advantage. Like, okay, during these days I'm super motivated. And so I'm going to mm-hmm. play in podcast recordings or whatever right? during, these days. <laughs> and during these days, I feel kind of tired. So I'm going to just kind of like not plan anything super exciting on those days. Um, and then also, I think that like, like, and under the sense of like, oh, I don't need to feel like pain or whatever. Um, you know, the pill really slaps a bandaid on a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, I know for me, I have 
cysts on my ovaries and um, which are for causing all the things I was experiencing. And instead of like digging into it and getting to the root of it, it just kind of like slapped a bandaid on it. Um, mm-hmm. But thankfully I was able to really um, learn about that and get to the root cause of it before we decided to have children and um, in reverse, like start reversing it. So I haven't had um, problems achieving pregnancy. Um, but um, yeah, so anyways, got on a little tangent, but <laughs> in addition okay. to natural family planning, um, I really just try to exemplify that. Like, um, like as women, we are created differently, but there is a purpose behind that. And then like PMS, anxiety, cramps, like all those things um, are common, but not necessarily normal. Um, and you can really learn through your chart, like what's going on inside of your body, um, and then reverse it without the pill. So. Yeah. Oh, that's like just the, the best, the best. Um, so I think, or can you tell us maybe about like the best and, and also the worst experience that you've had talking to someone about birth control? Yeah, I think, um, I think the, like the best is, um, a friend who, got off birth control. And then, um, her symptoms that she was experiencing, you know, she was just super receptive. It was a really close friend. And, um, she was experiencing like, you know, cramps and, um, and just PMS and like all these things. Um, and, um, before she was on the pill and then she got off and, you know, did some like nutritional stuff and, um, and all that, like that, went away and she was able to achieve pregnancy easily. Um, and so those are always the best. Like when people get off the pill and then they realize like, Oh, you know, like they get off the pill and they get pregnant really easily. Um, and intentionally, or, um, or if I'm like, um, just kind of just like the openness with it. Um, and then I definitely think the worst is like, you know, people who, probably look at me like I'm crazy. Like, you know, you're doing what? Like, you know, you have kids who are 13 months apart because my, my girls are 13 months apart. So that is always, you know, like hard, but I just try to extend grace, you know, in that. Um, and, and then I always explain like, look, I was, we were doing a method that's not good. (laughs) after you have a baby and and these are the ones that you should try if you, you know, um, Mm -hmm. and now I have an instructor, you know? So, um, but I just try to meet people with grace because yeah, I don't know what they're going through. So, um, I really haven't had like a super, super bad experience other than people who are maybe just like completely closed off. And then I just know, like, look, we're all on our own journey and it is what it is. And, um, I can be like a a vessel and like share my own story, but, um, I'm not going to like, I can't make decisions for people. So I just try to keep that in mind, you know? Yeah. Rachel, that's such a good point is that like, you know, we are called as Christians, we're called to, to lead the horse to water, but we cannot make it drink. Like that is the Holy spirit's job. Um, you know, we're, we're here to share our experience. We're here to share the knowledge that we have. We're here to, you know, instruct the ignorant as, as demeaning as that sounds, that that is what we are called to do. Now, instructing the ignorant does not mean like sitting them down and saying, and chaining them to a desk and saying, you have to do this now. That's not instructing the ignorant. Instructing the ignorant. bashing somebody. And it's like, you know, I don't, I don't know people's, what's in people's, past or what their emotions are or whatever. So, um, I try to just share like, you know, and then let, let God and the Holy spirit take care of the rest. Exactly. (laughs) Well, and I think one of the best ways to, you know, again, we're on this, this corporal, I mean, this uh, spiritual work of mercy, um, this instruct the ignorant, like one of the best ways to instruct the ignorant is to share in their ignorance. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, yeah, I once thought the way that you did Mm -hmm. and, and now here's my experience. Like if, if that applies to you, obviously, like it doesn't apply to all of us. I I thought I was on the pill for at least seven, seven years, you know, and I really thought I was like doing the right thing. (laughs) Thing, right, you know, right, and then yeah. I would never have children if I didn't get on the pill, you know, and um, and I just 
or that if I got off the pill, you know, I was going to not have any sort of like say so in, in planning and discernment and you know what I mean? And, um, Mm -hmm. and yeah, so I, and it's scary. Like I will say it's, it's scary, especially I think for, um, for men (laughs) and, um, you know, if your wife wants to get off the bill, like, I think that can be very scary for a man. Um, and then women who, um, either have like a traumatic pregnancy or traumatic birth or, um, postpartum depression. I had postpartum depression after my first. Mm -hmm. And when I found out I was pregnant, when she was five months old, I was still in the postpartum depression. And I was like, Oh my gosh, what did we do? You know, like, um, and but then, you know, I look at it and like my daughter, my second, I mean, both my daughters, all my kids, of course, but, um, my second daughter was clearly, um, not <laughs> my plan, but I think it's so much more like beautiful because she was in God's plan. Like, right, yeah. and she is such a gift to our entire family, but especially to our older sister. And I am like, um, like I had to surrender a lot and I'm Mm. so glad I did because, um, I can't even like imagine what life would be like without her, you know? And I'm so glad that they're 13 months apart. As scary as that was when I was sitting in it, it's been amazing. And I say now I'm like, I would love to have more kids 13 months apart because they're best friends and (laughs) you know, (laughs) this is what God wanted for us and he's delivering. That's such a good point though. Cause I think, I think a lot of moms fear that, um, in that postpartum period, Um, you know, and, and it's interesting that, that fear that you're talking about with birth control, um, or going off of birth control, most of that stems from the fact that we are not properly taught about our fertility. The only thing we're taught is that, oh, the, well, the only way to avoid pregnancy is the pill. Yeah. No, sorry. Actually the only way to 100% guarantee that you're going to avoid pregnancy is to not have sex. That is yes. the only way. Yeah, exactly. There is no other way. Exactly. <laughs> and like, you're like, you said, like, we're not taught that. And like, oh my goodness. When I learned about, um, charting, I was fascinated. Like, yeah, me too. Wow, there's a window that you can get pregnant in. Like, and I was an adult. I had like no clue. Like I, literally thought you could just get pregnant any time of the month, you know? And, um, and then it really is like to know your body is so empowering and, um, and like just to, um, to know your cycle and it's, there's just a beauty in it that I think is purposeful and, um, but you got to give it, you like, people have to give it a chance. So, mm-hmm. um, and it's hard. Okay, it is hard to give, it is very hard to give up that. It does. Control. Yeah. Well, and it's like, it's giving up an element of control and we, yes. as humans, we really like to control things. Um, yes. and, and as Catholics, we continue to learn how little control we have over yes. the things in our yes. lives quick, before we move on to the, the last couple of questions, I want to get, share this hot take that I heard from Christopher West about birth control or the pill. As he said, the pill was not invented, um, to avoid pregnancy. We already had a surefire way to avoid pregnancy, which is abstinence. The pill was invented because we did not want to learn self-mastery as a human species. Wow. That's like, yeah, like, yeah, mic drop. Like that's, (laughs) and I, I do feel, and especially like, I want to say like in, you know, today's world, like at least like our generation, you know, it's, um, kind of, a lot of people are like, oh, well, I'm going to do what I want to (laughs) do, you know? And like. Uh, I mean, I'm like that. I yeah. am like, oh, you know, I'm, I want a milkshake. I'm going to go to Chick-fil-A and get me a milkshake <laughs> or, you know, like, and there's like, but there is some, there is some beauty and like, um, purpose too, and, and denial and, um, yeah. and self-control. And, um, and so, I mean, everything is, is hard, you know, but like, um, then the flip side, I would, I'd rather keep, you know, doing like when I chart, when I was doing, um, when I do natural family planning, like at least with Creighton, I, um, do, I like am totally in control. Like I know I'm not pregnant. Like, I don't feel like, Oh, I have to take a pregnancy test. Like I will say when I was doing some dothermal without an instructor, 
I literally thought I was pregnant every single, every single month. Yeah. I think anytime I, that you're trying to chart without an instructor, you're probably going to think you're pregnant 100%. Very hard. Yes. And then we found out about Creighton and we completely switched to that. And, um, we've been doing it since my sex. So we did some to thermal, um, after my first, and then, um, Creighton after my second and she's four and a half now. So we've really been doing it four and a half years, except for the two pregnancies in between. Um, and I really have never thought like, oh, I might be pregnant. Like I know I'm either pregnant or I'm, I'm not, yeah, yeah. you know, um, there's no way, like there's no way I could be. So, um, it's just really, yeah, like empowering and, um, and, and then the, I guess, like you said, like, you know, self-mastery in it too, is, is just fascinating and, you know. Yeah, definitely. So I think most of us listening to this podcast, um, would like our friends and family to switch from using birth control, um, and switch over to, you know, natural family planning for family planning purposes. We would like them to chart their cycle for their health. Um, but we don't really know where to start. What would you say is the best way to approach the subject of birth control with, um, like closer friends and family? I, I really think, um, and empathy and understanding. Um, and then keeping in mind, like you said, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Like, um, and then like knowing, knowing when to speak on it and when maybe not to, Mm -hmm. um, like knowing who, who is at a point in their life where they can receive it and who isn't. Um, and then just being super, super open about it yourself. Um, and, just kind of living, living it yourself. Um, and like being able to say like, um, like when I found out I was pregnant with my second, I was like, I'm scared. Like, you know, and I think people can relate to that, but then, you know, we had her and we continued to choose natural family planning. We just kind of switched gears from right. Thermal to Creighton, you know, you realize that that wasn't a good method choice for you and for for your lifestyle. And that's, okay. Like, (laughs) yeah. And it might be great for other people, but it just, it wasn't what, um, worked for like me and my personality. Yeah. Um, or my husband. And I love, you know, that's the other beautiful, beautiful thing in it is that he's involved. Like he has to be involved, you know, versus me just taking a pill. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and when I share, you know, those things and just through, um, you know, conversations, it, I think people just kind of open up to it a little bit more. Um, but at the end of the day, like, um, I can only do so much and then I have to like, let it go. And I have to know when to speak and when to not speak. Um, and, and then also just praying about it too. Like there is so much power and just saying like, give me the wisdom, give me courage, give me, um, you know, whatever I, I need to, um, to help her or, you know, to open up her mind. Um, and you know, like, Lord, if you, if you want me to, to, um, help her, then ask her to come to like, at, you know, get her to come to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and then sometimes I just say my piece and I let the Holy spirit, you know, plant that seed and, you well, know, people come and, back or, and we need to do that more, you know, as, as Catholics to just leave room for the Holy spirit. Like it is not ever us that's changing yeah, people's exactly, minds exactly. or that's doing anything like all of this is coming through the Lord. And so, you know, we, we need to recognize that, like we're a conduit yeah. and, and then we just, we need to be okay with stepping away. Yeah. Um, and being like, Hey, you know, if you have any questions, let me know, just come on back to me. If you, um, like if you want to use me, I am here and I am open to helping this person. But at the end of the day, like, yeah, it's the Holy spirit that's working, that's working, not, not me. So I might be, like you said, like the vessel for it, but, um, but, um, I can't change someone's mind. So I just, I, I think prayer and, um, and discernment and, um, and just knowing, um, how and when to speak and when maybe not to sometimes a lot more can be done when you don't speak than when you do speak. So, um, and just living your life, um, in confidence. And, um, 
and like I said, like after my, when I found out I was pregnant with my second, um, yes, I was scared, but I was still confident that the choice was right. You know, like that, Mm -hmm. um, that there was no mistake, you know, made or anything. Um, and, um, and just to like live it fully. And then, you know, people will see like, oh, this works and they're happy. Like, Mm -hmm. let me, let me see what's, what's going on and, um, and come to you. Yeah, definitely. Oh, Rachel, I love this. Thank you so much for, for sharing your experience and, and sharing some of those tips and and ideas with us. Um, I just, I personally really appreciate it. I'm thinking about these other people in my life. I'm like, okay. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you for having me. This this. fun. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thanks so much for listening. If you are not already following us on Instagram, be sure to check us out at charting toward intimacy. And as always, we love to hear from you guys. So if you have questions, comments, episode topic ideas, please reach out on Instagram or via email. Links to those are in the show notes. Until next time.